Hello guys and welcome to another video. Uh, we're going to discuss today the uh, different types of neurons and receptors located in the autonomic nervous system. So uh, what we're going to do is just begin ourselves with a kind of a quick breakdown of our nervous system in general and what's going on. Now remember you have anatomically two divisions. You have the anatomical division, the CNS, the central nervous system, which is composed of two things. The brain and the spinal cord and the anatomically that's all that is there and then the other part of that that we would have the other nervous system that we have here is peripheral nervous system or PNS now the peripheral nervous system is broken down into two individual uh, parts that we're going to look at um, one of which is somatic now somatic nervous system deals exclusively with skeletal muscles, right? Voluntary control of skeletal muscle. But then there is the autonomic, and this one allows you to do the things you need to do without thinking about doing it. The autonomic nervous system has three smaller subdivisions to it, two of which are quite huge. There's the sympathetic, there's the parasympathetic, and there is the enteric divisions of the autonomic nervous system. Uh, now, this is, uh, just to let you guys know, this PNS here is only the motor, or to say the efferent division that we're talking about here. Uh, I would talk about, in maybe another video, the um, uh, afferent or sensory so what we want to take a look at now is uh, to really begin to look at the organization of the neurons and the structures so what i'm going to do is right in the middle i'm going to draw a central nervous system very simplistic drawing of our cns here brain and spinal cord right and draw our cns and let's begin with the uh, uh differences first here um and we'll draw it again is all the cns there are cells called effector cells that we need to control, an effector cell. And this effector cell that I'm in need of controlling is going to be controlled by neurons. Now, there are neurons that are residing somewhere inside the central nervous system. So let's put this guy in the brain here. Let's put a neuron residing in the brain. That neuron would give off an axon. It would then form another neuron here. And then it would synapse and give off another axon to control the effector. Surrounding those, there would be a structure called a ganglia. And all a ganglia is is a collection of neuron cell bodies in the peripheral nervous system. So what we have is the neuron comes from the CNS to the ganglia, is referred to as being pre ganglionic, pre-ganglionic. The one that comes after it is called post-ganglionic, a post-ganglionic neuron. So what we want to begin to see is that these axons uh, of the pre-ganglionic neurons who are either in the brain or spinal cord, they leave in the spinal cord in the lateral gray horn, they go outwards and they synapse somewhere in a ganglia. And in that ganglia, what they're going to do is the uh, synapsing to the postganglionic cell. And all that's exposed here is the axons. And the axons for each of these are called fibers. So the axon of the preganglionic neuron is called the preganglionic fiber. And the axon of the postganglionic neuron is called the postganglionic fiber. Now, it's important to also note that the ganglionic neuron, uh, also called the postganglionic neuron, controls our visceral effectors. Our effector here, the E, the effector cell, could be, uh, it could be a smooth muscle cell. It could be a cardiac muscle cell. Um, it also could be a gland cell or an adipose cell. Smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, gland, and adipose are what the effector cells here are. 
So somewhat think of it this way, like a relay race. You got runner number one, that's our preganglionic neuron, and he's going to release a neurotransmitter like a baton to runner number two, the postganglionic neuron, who will release a neurotransmitter at the finish line, the uh, effector cells, smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, gland, or adipose. So what we want to now do is, is just jump into the structural differences with sympathetic and parasympathetic. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to redraw out my CNS here, right? And we're going to write that this is sympathetic. And on sympathetic, what we want to see is there are the pre and post ganglionic neurons. Sympathetic gang, uh, pre and posts are different than parasympathetic pre and post. Now, if I were to take my spinal cord here and say, okay, here I have my cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and sacral spinal cord, and we were to divide that up, we see that the preganglionic neurons of the sympathetic division come out of the thoracic and lumbar region. So we refer to this as being thoracolumbar. And why is that? Is that thoracolumbar, it comes from T1 vertebral level and goes to L2 vertebral level. So let's take our one of our thoracolumbar neurons here, preganglionic fiber, and let's bring him out. Now, the fibers here are relatively short as the ganglia are very close by. Preganglionics are short. Now, the postganglionic fibers are considerably longer. The reason for this is the ganglia nearby. And this would go to an effector cell somewhere. Now, there is one case where sympathetic neurons are the postganglionic fibers. There's one exception where they are not long, and that is the suprarenal medulla. And we'll take a brief look at that uh, later on in this video. So, if we know that they have a short, preganglionic neurons and long postganglionic neurons and that's important for us to remember there now parasympathetic on the other hand parasympathetic let's redraw our central nervous system again right here's our CNS parasympathetic is quite a bit different. Now, I'm not going into the different physiological common names like rest and digest here, but those are names we might hear them called. Uh, that might be for a different video. This, we're going to be focusing on the pre- and post-ganglionic neurons. Now, this one is going to have pre-ganglionic neurons coming off the brain or the sacral segment of spinal cord. So, if I've got my cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and sacral regions, we call this guy craniosacral. As the neurons come from the brain and the sacral region. Sometimes I can just not right. So, given that, let's take a look at it. sacrally, this comes from S2 to S4. From the brain, it's cranial nerve number 3, number 7, number 9, and number 10, cranial nerves. Cranial nerves 3, 7, 9, and 10. Number 3, oculomotor, 7, facial, 9, glossopharyngeal, and 10, vagus are all going to be cranial nerves that come off the parasympathetic division. So parasympathetic preganglionic fibers here are relatively longer than the postganglionic fibers and uh, so we are going to see it's opposite to the sympathetic and also you're going to see sacral as well craniosacral and let's make sure that looks far shorter there for us and our understanding so what happens with these neurons, there are differences in the law pre's and posts in their length. It's completely opposite the sympathetic. 
So, uh, a few things about those ganglia, just to let you know those ganglia could be uh, things like uh, sympathetic chain ganglia, collateral ganglia, or the suprarenal medulla when it's sympathetic division. And uh, that is least sympathetic ganglia. And the parasympathetic nervous system has a variety of other ganglia as well that uh, are discussed, like your celiac ganglia, things like that. So what we're going to then do is let's move on and look at the different types of neurons real quick. In the sympathetic and parasympathetic division, there are two types of neurons that we can have. One neuron here, if a neuron produces the neurotransmitter acetylcholine, ACH for short, we name these neurons cholinergic, cholinergic neurons. If the neuron comes in and it produces epinephrine or norepinephrine, which is adrenaline, we call them adrenergic. And these are huge uh, things to know. These names are quite important. So let's begin to break these down a little bit further as we talk about these. So there are sympathetic receptors that are also tagging these guys. So let's say I've got a cell membrane here and some receptors that I might come in. And I've got epinephrine or norepinephrine that could be stimulating them. So we've got one or two receptors that we could deal with here. You have what is called an alpha receptor or a beta receptor that epinephrine, norepinephrine can do. Now alpha receptors like norepinephrine better and they're more sensitive to it. And there's the betas. Now with alphas, there is the alpha 1s and the alpha 2s. And the betas, there's beta 1, beta 2, and the beta 3 receptors. When it comes to alpha 1s, by far, they're the most common. So they're number 1. They allow an increase in calcium cations coming into a cell to excite it. They will, they're in the smooth muscle, I'm going to put smooth muscle, they're in the GI tract, the gut, um, they're also in the urinary system, and they're going to basically take, take sphincters and constrict them. And also, they're going to do vasodilation in the blood vessels. So let me put vasodilation. Alpha 2s, on the other hand, they lower cyclic adenosine monophosphate levels or lowering CAMP levels, the second messenger. What this guy is going to do is also it's going to decrease norepinephrine release as alpha-2s are located presynaptically on many neurons, especially adrenergic neurons. And we're going to relax smooth muscles and prevent things from moving through the gut. Now, beta 1s, on the other hand, they increase the heart rate because it's in the SA node uh, and the AV node of the heart. Uh, this is where beta blockers would attack. Uh, this is where they would be uh, beta, beta adrenergic receptor blockers, beta 1 specifically to lower the heart rate. Now, beta 2s, these guys are going to um, relax or dilate smooth muscle. So, we're in the respiratory tract. So, let's put bronchodilator. These are bronchodilators. Beta 3 is found in fat or adipose, and it increases fat breakdown called lipolysis. Lipolysis is fat breakdown. So these are your alphas and your betas, which are on the effector cells located that are under control of the sympathetic division. Now, parasympathetic division, on the other hand, it's got two different kinds of receptors as well. But they fall into two main broad categories, nicotinic and muscarinic. So let's take that line here and draw it. So we're going to see our nicotinic and our muscarinic when we have ACH here. Acetylcholine can go to the nicotinic or muscarinic receptors. Now nicotinics are at all somatic 
NMJs, neuromuscular junctions. Also, all ganglionic synapses in the ANS. What do I mean by that? If I go back here and I show you guys, in these ganglionic synapses, acetylcholine is used in all, sympathetic and parasympathetic, okay? So then the muscarinics, these guys are only on effectors who are under control of the parasympathetic division. Now, they can excite or inhibit because they have linked to them something called a G protein. In G proteins, how that's affected will result in a different response. So what I want to show you now is, let's take each one of these, and let's start off with um, our, uh, we did sympathetic first, so let's do sympathetic. And there are two of these that I want to cover in the sympathetic nervous system. Sympathetic, first off, let's look at the neural pathway. Let's look at when we have neurons. In the CNS, you're going to have a preganglionic neuron, and it's going to come out. Now remember, sympathetic division, we have a short pre and a longer postganglionic neuron. Who is going to an effector? The first one releases ACH because all pre uh, at all ganglionic synapses we find ACH. That makes the preganglionic neuron here cholinergic. And that means we need a cholinergic receptor, and this is a nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. Now, in the sympathetic division, we are either going to release epinephrine or norepinephrine as our neurotransmitters, and this postganglionic neuron is called adrenergic, and we need an adrenergic receptor, which is an alpha or a beta receptor. Now, if we were to take the other one, the suprarenal medulla pathway, if I start in the CNS with a neuron that is cholinergic and it comes out here, this postganglionic neuron is in the suprarenal medulla, and it is very small. And he actually is going to be sitting nearby a blood vessel capillaries who will travel that all the way to effector cells. So ACH is released here making the preganglionic neuron uh, referred to as cholinergic. The postganglionic neuron is releasing, a, uh, is releasing epinephrine, norepinephrine. So let's put E and NE here that it's releasing. And the E and NE will travel through the blood and it will find an adrenergic receptor somewhere. And it will stimulate these or turn it off. These are the alphas and the betas, one of the two. And that's sympathetic division. Parasympathetic, however, is quite a bit more simple. So let's look at parasympathetic. Parasympathetic which we call rest and digest, if I'm in the CNS, I've got a neuron that's residing here. Remember here I've got a long pre and a shorter post. The preganglionic neuron releases acetylcholine. So that means, guys, all preganglionic neurons are cholinergic. And given that, we need a receptor for acetylcholine. These are nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. Them being nicotinic, they are found at all ganglionic synapses in the autonomic nervous system. The postganglionic neuron also releases ACH. And when I go to the target cell or effector, there also has to be a acetylcholine receptor, but these are muscarinic and they're G protein. And this will determine how and what kind of response we will get. So just remember that uh, with these drawings, you have different receptors in different locations, 
and each neuron releasing those things. So make sure you do know, uh, very beneficial to know what pre and post ganglionic means, what a ganglia is, uh, which one is the thoracolumbar and where those neurons come in, uh, where they leave the spinal cord, who has short and long pre's and posts. Um, also, which cranial nerves, uh, 3, 7, 9, and 10, is crucial to understand for the parasympathetic division. Uh, number 10 being a, a majority of pa uh, parasympathetic innervation. Um, also, uh, what cholinergic and adrenergic means. Uh, pay attention to these receptors. You do need to know the locations. This is very important for students who are going into healthcare. And also, when it comes to this uh, parasympathetic receptors, the nicotinics and the muscarinics. So getting those straight. And then the pathways, the ner nerve pathways. And knowing these neurons and how they're wired together is crucial to understanding the overall functions. So guys, this concludes our video on the autonomic nervous system neurons and receptors. I hope you found this video helpful. Please take the time to like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, and this concludes my video. I uh, look forward to see you guys in the next one. Thank you.